Spending a disproportionate amount of time dealing with children who persistently disrupt is not fair. It's not fair on the rest of the children. Those who come every day, who work diligently, who follow the rules, they deserve so much more. It's also not fair on Kyle, who's chewing the curtains in anger. He needs to learn that what may work outside of school does not work inside it. He needs to learn that what may work outside of nursery or primary school, secondary school or an FE college does not work inside it. He needs to learn it quickly before labels form and attitudes become entrenched. You are not going to solve the behaviour of children with ADHD by punishing them into behaving better. You've tried it, it isn't working, it doesn't work, and actually it's a futile pursuit. Humiliation, confrontation, shouts and castigations provide their own reward. They make Kyle feel important. He's got your time, your attention, and the thrill of being at the centre of public spectacle. We can so easily reaffirm what Kyle already knows will work. Carl wants to feel important. He will achieve this by fair means, by any means necessary. He's learnt from home that certain behaviours work. You need to teach him that they don't work here. You need to wean him off the attention addiction, not by replacing it in the long term with an addiction to false praise and flattery, but with some cold turkey and some skilled teaching of new behaviours. Catch Carl when he's behaving appropriately, I mean that catch him. And you may need to catch him even when he's just taking a breather. Don't let sleeping dogs lie. Gently interrupt his good behaviour. Thank him for doing the right thing. Show him the icon that relates to the behaviour he's learning. Give him a taste of how it feels to be seen as important for doing the right things. And, and expect his rejection. Expect him not to want the praise, not to want that acknowledgement. Carl's behaviour is not going to change overnight. There needs to be a period of cold turkey as you wean him off the attention. Expect things to get worse before they get better. You need to be persistent with new strategies for at least 30 days. New behaviours and routines take time to embed, to become habit. Let's get the basics right with students with ADHD. Let's make sure that we have got a classroom that suits their learning style. Students with ADHD and many boys don't learn well in classrooms where they're expected to sit down, shut up and get on. Right, we know this. In fact, it's old news. The Pivotal website is full of active, engaging lesson ideas to get pupils up and working. Brain breaks, brain gym exercises have been in common uses for many years. We know that boys especially, especially boys or girls with ADHD need to work with mind and hand. We know the relationship between active mind and active body. We know all of this, and yet for some reason these ideas just appear to be temporary bolt-ons. Strategies that are never fully embedded into the routines of the classroom. When I go to look around schools, when I look at nurseries, primary, secondary, FE, I see boys who sit and do the starter, sit and listen to the register, sit still in assembly, sit and listen to a story, sit through literacy, numeracy, mental puzzles, and are utterly fed up of sitting. At playtime, at break time, they want to burn off energy, but many have to sit on the chairs outside the staff room corridor, presumably in penance for their crimes of movement. Students with ADHD are good at many things. They can be extremely intelligent, adaptable to change, energetic, hardworking, optimistic, creative, fun-loving. They can also be very good at things that cause absolute havoc in the classroom. They can be provocative. They can be aggressive. They can overreact and under-engage. Many are masters of the secondary behaviour. They're experts at destroying the concentration of others at distraction, at relentless conversation, dangerous behaviour without concern for consequence, leaving activities unfinished, shouting out before the question is finished. They're good at forgetfulness, they're good at intrusion, and they're masters of the fidget. So what do teachers who succeed with students with ADHD do? 
What are the practical ideas that they use that work? They have a consistency. Their lessons are predictable. There's a structure. There's a predictability in how they intervene, in how they respond to some of the inappropriate behaviours. There's intensive modelling. There's routines, routines, routines. We did them in the first steps course that you've done. Good teachers model the behaviours they want to see for the students and with other students. They encourage positive relationships. They help the student to make relationships with others. They have a specific routine for time out so that there is a place and a time and a mechanism that students can use to release tension. They use visual signs, symbols, clear language, consistently applied. They use visual cues. The physical environment is taken care of. There's a seating plan. The, the size and division of space is looked at. The level and range of noise is carefully monitored. In many ways, what they do is the stuff from the first steps course that we did, but really, really well, to the letter. They are models of the behavior they want to see, and they accept that that model will take a long time to set in the student. For students with ADHD, it's been shown that the Constant drip feed of praise can often be as effective as the prescription drug. Of course, you don't want to use this as a long-term strategy, but in the short term, short targets, short bits of praise, nice acknowledgement seems to work very well. Apply rewards and consequences calmly. You know, use whatever you use, stickers and stamps and post-its. Consider giving the student a mechanism to record where they are on the ladder of sanctions and on the ladder of uh, positive reinforcement throughout the lesson. Some teachers use um, a series of flashcards for those students who constantly shout out and constantly interrupt, so they're not always having to give them their attention and turn away from the group. Some teachers use a negotiated timeout card, so when that pressure cooker starts to really steam, they can give the student five minutes, 10 minutes. You know, it's as simple as sometimes as walking around the playground, as standing in a comfortable spot, as going away from the group for five minutes. Carefully choose students for group and paired activities. Rerun the routines for turn taking and sharing before the activity, during the activity, and as a reflection afterwards. Use other students as models for appropriate behavior. Encourage friendships that are based on how you learn best and not who you'd like to sit with best. Of course, what works for one student on a Monday morning doesn't necessarily work for the same student on a Thursday afternoon. You need to start tracking the strategies that are engaging those students and building on them and talking to them about the strategies that work for them and giving them a voice in planning how you intervene and support them with their behavioural change.